OK, I think we uh, stopped here last time uh, in the Miller theorem. And we said, OK, if you have a gain or two nodes between an inverting gain and you have a floating capacitance or capacitor, then you can split the floating capacitor into two grounded capacitors, Z1 or C1 and C2. And uh, one of them will be multiplied by one minus the gain. And because you have non inverting, sorry, you have inverting amplifier, now you are multiplying actually the capacitance by one plus the gain. Okay, so this was uh, uh, discussed already. And of course, if you have higher capacitance, what will be the case with the bandwidth? Uh, because we know the time constant uh, uh, is proportionally uh, with the capacitance value, and it is inversely proportional to the frequency, right? So if you have higher capacitance, it means you have lower uh, uh, pole or maybe lower bandwidth, because now we are talking about high frequency. Okay, so let's find the uh, maybe the number of poles and also the uh, uh, the time constants for the common source amplifier. This is the common source amplifier, and we are talking about high frequency response. In high frequency response, what happens to the coupling capacitors? We have we usually have some coupling capacitors here, right? C1, C2, and maybe pi pass capacitor. But because now we are far from the midband, we are in high frequency. Those capacitors, as we discussed last time, will be shorted. OK, so those capacitors will be shorted. And this is the main objective of these capacitors. We need them to be shorted so we can couple the input, the output, and even bypass the source to the ground. OK, so what is left is the parasitic capacitors, which is CGD. We'll consider CGD and CGS. And also uh, sometimes we can ignore, we can, sorry, we can add uh, the capacitive load. Because usually the amplifier will drive uh, another circuit. And that circuit, uh, usually this is what is, uh, uh, this is the case in electronics, will have some capaci uh, input capacitance, okay? So we can model whatever the driving, uh, whatever the capacitance we are driving as CL. This is usually uh, done in, in, in high frequency uh, analysis. OK, even if it's not there, you can consider you have a capacitive load uh, in addition to the resistive load that is uh, available here. Just in case if uh, the question say, OK, neglect the capacitive load, then yes, you can do that. Uh, and usually we we uh, we name the capacitance uh, need uh, seen by the output as the output uh, pole, okay? Or I mean the pole seen by the or affected or created by the the output. Uh, we call it the output pole, and the one created by the input here, we name it as input pole, okay? Or in in short, we name them as F N and maybe F out. OK, these are just names. You can say F1, F2, you can say FP1, FP2, that's fine. But usually we do this uh, in, in, uh, in studying the high frequency. So what we know about the Miller theorem, I mean, what we know about the floating capacitor CGD. CGS, it is floating capacitor. We don't have any problem. I, I think all of you know how to, to find the time constant here. Uh, to find the time constant for the CGS, what we need to do? I need to find now the time constant for CGS. What is the time constant? It is what? Capacitance multiplied by resistance, right? So if I am I am considering only CGS, I am ignoring other cap parasitic capacitors in the circuit. Now this one will be open, right? This one will be open, will, will not be there, okay? This is a superposition as we did last time in the low frequency. In the low frequency, we consider only one coupling capacitor. And then we neglect others. Neglecting others in the coupling in the low frequency domain, it means shorting all parasitic, all, all, all sorry, coupling capacitors. It is the opposite here because in the midband, originally in the midband, 
those parasitics are not there. They are open. تمام? While the cable capacitors, they are short. نرجع للأساس يا شباب. الأساس في الأوبريشن عندنا دائما في الميد باند ريجن. So what is the basis? What is uh, uh, the, 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 the basis of these capacitors? احنا عندنا الكابلينج shorted والparasitic open. تمام? فلما ندرس الـ superposition of these capacitors, we need نحتاج نرجعهم لأصلهم. Okay? ف we want to study, for example, the time constant for CGS. Now we want to ignore others. Ignoring others in high frequency, it means open circuit all capacitors. تمام؟ uh, If you are talking about low frequency uh, coupling capacitors, if you are studying C1, for example, and ignoring others, which is C2, and maybe the bypass capacitor, it means shorting those capacitors. I hope this is clear, Ishaba. So now what is the time constant of CGS? Uh, the capacitance sector of uh, GS multiplied exactly. by the R equivalent. Exactly. Which is what? Which is R signal in parallel with R, uh, uh, in series with R. It is, no, you are right. It is in parallel, right? Because now the CGS is grounded. So this one here is what? This one looks like this, like this circuit, CJS and R signal. Of course, we are shorting the input. This one is shorted. We deactivating all uh, sources. And this is your RG, OK? And of course, this is your MOSFET here. So now what we see, I mean, CJS is only R signal with, in parallel with RG, OK? Because one of it sees that only from one terminal. The other terminal is grounded. OK. Uh, OK, so this is for, for CGS. What about CGD? If I want to study the CGD, is it straightforward? I can do that. Can I find the CGD while it is uh, resides in two nodes and those two nodes are or they, they experience some gain? Uh, Miller's uh, theorem. Yes, it's it's so the, the the best way to analyze this circuit. I mean, you can do that. You can do the exact solution. You can find the equivalent seen by CGD by drawing the small signal and doing all of that. OK, uh, but it will complicate the, the analysis here. But why not to use the Miller theorem here? So you have a floating capacitor which is CGD and you have an uninverting gain. Sorry, and uh, it is inverting gain between the gate and the drain, and now you can use the Miller theorem. So we'll split the CGD between these nodes. So we will have C1 here, let's call it, and we have another one C2 here, okay? And those capacitors are due to, uh, I mean, we use the Miller theorem to find the value of those capacitors. So basically what you will have, you will have something like this, OK, in the circuit, so we are splitting CGD into two float, uh, two grounded capacitors to simplify the analysis. And this is uh, a Miller uh, approximation in, and it is a good approximation for now. Tamam? So what do you see uh, Shabab, from C1 and CGS? Let's now consider the pole. I'm not interested to find the value of the capacitance. We'll do it in next slide. But what about the pole C1? What is the time constant of C1? If I say time constant for C1, it means I am ignoring CJS, I am ignoring C2. And I am deactivating all sources. And this is very important in high frequency analysis. OK? So in this case, C1 sees only R signal in parallel with the RG. I need to move uh, faster. So it, isn't it the same time constant or the same equivalent resistance seen by the CGS? Yeah. It is, right? So usually, uh, so this one C1, uh, The capacitance may differ. Yes, so this is exactly the pole of
الصراع الدكتور شباب ولا شو صار؟ اي شكله فصل
سوري جايز تسمعوني الان يا شباب؟ يس يس نسمعك انت ذير واز ان ايشو وذ كيف الواي فاي هنا بالقسم ظاهر تكنيكلي يعني في مشكله تكنيكال ففصل النت تماما الان شغال على الجوال ان شاء الله ما ترجع نفس المشكله just in case if there is any if any disconnection the quiz be can deployed on 12:30 in sha Allah so you can go ahead and start but in sha Allah for the time being it should be fine okay let's continue from here and i think we are still recording fine okay so as i said cjs and c1 appears in parallel okay this one and this one appears in parallel so why not to connect or why not to sum them up? So this is what we call C in or tau n. So tau n, the input uh, impedance or the, the input pole, which is one over tau n, equals to uh, the summation of these capacitors, C1 plus Cgs multiplied by the same uh, resistance, right? Rg, okay? So we'll find C1 in, in, in the next slide, but hopefully this is okay, I shall for you. What about T out or the time constant seen at the output? So I'm looking at this node here. As I said previously, we have CL, okay, and CL due to the capacitance seen by the input of next stage of the amplifier or maybe some other parasitics that we ignored or previously, but they can be lumped here in the capacitive load. So let's assume we have CL. What do you think? Don't we have CL appears in parallel with C2? So let's call this is tau out. And this one here, we have CL plus C2 because they are in parallel, right? And this is what RL in parallel with RD. Of course, I'm neglecting here R0. If you are not neglecting R0, which is the output impedance of the transistor, you can ignore, you can add them in parallel also with RL and RD. So the resistance seen, seen here will be RD in parallel with RL. Is it clear, Yashaba, how we get here? Yes. Mumtaz. So let's now find the value of C1 and C2, okay? So we are interested to find the value of C1 and C2. What we know from Miller theorem that it says, okay, C1 will be CGD, which is the floating capacitor here, okay? Multiply by one plus, or let's use uh, the same as uh, Miller theorem, minus K. But what is K? K, it is at the voltage gain between these two nodes. So what is the voltage gain between these two nodes, between the drain and the gate? If you are, if your signal is, in the gate and you're looking for them for the, for, from the drain. What is the value of the gain? This is a common source, huh? Without degeneration. And neglecting or not. واحد يقولها. مفترض انكم ذاكرين شباب. رايت الكويز. What we know about common source without degeneration, without R0, what is the gain if you are here in the gate and you are looking from the drain? Without drawing this GM, exactly, but in minus, right? Minus. common source, shabab. Tafadal, Moed. Hamza, yes. Yes, I said minus GM RD is following. Exactly, RD only, well, RD in parallel with RL. Are in, in parallel case, with RL. Yeah, in this case, parallel. Yes, in this case, yes. So this is K, or this is the gain that we have here, okay? Between, again, between this node and this node. It's not the overall gain voltage coming from V signal to the V output. It is only between the gate and the drain. So we just, because this is what we are interested in. The CGD, it is between the gate and the drain. So we need to find the gain between these two nodes, and this is what we have. So C1 will be what? CGD 1 plus GM RD in parallel with RL. And as I said, Shabab, if you are including R0, it will appear in parallel with RD and R0. What about C2? C2 will be what? CGD 1 minus 1 over K. So the difference here, we have 1 minus K, and that one will be 1 over K. 
OK. OK, Shabab. So this one, because you have inverting amplifier again, this one will be plus one plus one over and the gain will be GM RD in parallel with RL. OK, and you can see here that C2 can be sometimes can be approximated to be CGD, the value of CGD, because you are not multiplying the that value. And can I show up capacitance seen at the output effectively almost the same as CGD. That's one over GM multiplied by the resistance usually less than one. So maybe we can uh, ignore it, but even you can deal with it or you can leave it as as this one. But at the end of the day, you need to get some uh, uh, feeling here that output terminal or the capacitance seen at the output terminal will be almost your CGD value, while the input capacitance, which is C1, is multiplied by one plus the gain. يعني إذا كان الجين عندك خمسين أنت الآن you are multiplying CGD by fifty times, right? So this is the problem, and that's why we say in common source, usually we have a Miller capacitor or Miller effect. تمام؟ فالميلر إفكت جاي من وين؟ جاي لأن CGD موجود بين نقطتين والنقطتين هذه بينهم high inverting gain. Okay. طيب يا شباب. So that's why. We have this problem in common source amplifiers, and then you can you can take these uh, the, the the I mean these expressions and find your time constants again. Okay, طبعا we cannot go to the second uh, uh, step of the the topic today, which is how we approximate the time frequency. Uh, sorry, the pole the pole the corner frequency. الآن يا شباب we are in high frequency domain, so this is low frequency. Mid band high frequency. As we said, in high frequency, we have a low pass filter shape, right? So the corner frequency, which is F H, will be the corner frequency of the that low pass filter. Okay. Taban in the low frequency band, this is high pass behavior. So and we said, okay, we can estimate the FL by dominant pole. You can just go and find your dominant pole in here lowest, sorry, highest value, and that's your dominant pole in MOSFET. While in BGT, usually we like to add all poles together, and then that's our approximation, that's our FL. But in the high frequency, is it a good approach? Is it a good approximation to say, okay, the dominant pole will be our maximum uh, pole, uh, sorry, minimum pole here, right? So if it will be your minimum pole, because of course, if you have three, for example, poles, this one will appear here, F2, this one will appear here, F3, and so on. So the minimum pole will be your dominant pole. That's one approach to say that. So we'll investigate more next time, maybe Sunday. We'll investigate which one we should take. Either we take the dominant pole approximation, okay? Or we will develop another way of finding the high frequency pole. Okay, but in 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 in, in summary, or like, let's say, يعني, for you to take notes uh, uh, from here, that the dominant pole in high frequency is not a good approximation as it is in low frequency. تمام? In high frequency, we usually do another uh, another uh, approximation. What we call open circuit on open time, uh, open circuit time constant. Okay, uh, uh, and in short, inshallah, we'll stop here. So the high frequency will be one over the summation of the constants. Okay, this is not the case in the low frequency. In the low frequency, we just uh, we just take the dominant pole and we say this is our FL. While in high frequency, we find the time constant, time uh, tau in, tau out, and so on. And then we just sum them up, and then we take uh, the inverse of that. It will give us our uh, corner frequency. Okay, I will stop here. We'll talk about this one. We'll expand on it, inshallah, on next Sunday. Uh, but please, if you can go over the slides again, because I was thinking I, I will finish this one and try to go to the uh, source follower. But anyway, 
keep keep yourself ready inshallah by Tuesday by Sunday. Right. Uh, for now, Shabab, I'll stop recording. And then you can go to.